Captain's Log, Stardate 08202024. Greetings, goblins. I forgot my mazes book today, and I was going to talk about the darkness mechanic you should steal from that game. But since I drove 40 minutes out into the woods without it, we're going to talk about something else today, because this is my one day to record, and I don't want to waste it. So in a lot of games or session zeros, we discuss things that we don't want in our game. Things like safety rules, which is all well and good. I think it's important to talk about these things, and I don't want to diminish their value. But a topic I don't see nearly as much emphasis on is what we do want in our games. Playing D&D and other RPGs is a massive time commitment. So why would you not want to know what you're getting into ahead of time? So today's video topic is about expectations. Greetings and welcome to Elder Goblin Games, the universalist TTRPG channel where the DCs are made up and the stats don't matter. So today I want to discuss a topic that I don't think gets enough emphasis. Expectations. What do I mean by that? Let's say you sit down to play a game of D&D. Six different people might sit at the table and have six different ideas of exactly what that means. Because of the internet and things like live streaming, we have a lot of expectations when it comes to what a game will look like. And even just saying D&D, you might say, is it OD&D? Is it 3rd edition? Is it 5e? Is it the new 5e 2024? I don't know. Maybe I say D&D and then I put a book of Shadow Dark in front of you and you're like, what the frell? So what are ways we can talk about expectations? Three things come to mind. Touchstones, genre. Unfortunately for Jorben, this was the exact moment that no thoughts were forthcoming to his mind. He sat staring into the middle distance, disassociating for several minutes. So other than adventure and systems, what are ways that we can define expectations? And while to an extent choosing a system can garner a certain expectation, I think it's important to really lay these things out. Two things that come to mind immediately are genre and touchstones. So to go back to our example of D&D, someone might say, I'm running an old school style game of D&D. What does that mean? Maybe it means that you're tracking torches, rations, and every arrow. So Matt over here has just groaned, while Pat over here is grinning ear to ear. That sounds like the kind of game he is interested in playing. Or maybe I said, I'm going to run Waterdeep Dragon Heist. And you thought, oh good, heists. I love heists. But then you actually get down to playing the game, and it's a bunch of fetch quests and chores that you're doing for all these lovable NPCs throughout the city while you delve into dungeons and cellars. That may not be quite what you had in mind when you heard Heist. Maybe you were thinking something more like Blades in the Dark. Meanwhile, the girl over here who heard D&D and has only watched Critical Role online thought, oh, so we're going to have lots of dramatic moments, deep character arcs, and talk in funny voices while we sit around in a hot tub. And that is a very different experience than Pat the Grognard over here, who's expecting Conan. So here's an example. You might say something like, I want to run a gritty survivalist hex crawl. We are going to track those torches. We are going to count time and distance. See, that's already creating expectations in your mind. Or you might say, I want to focus on political faction-based intrigue. There's going to be a lot of talking and not a lot of fighting. If you're fighting, something has gone wrong. But sometimes genres are too broad of ideas, so we use things like touchstones. Like I just said, Conan is a perfect example. You know there's going to be sword and sorcery. There are going to be big bad guys vying for power and control over the scarce resources that there are. There are going to be strange creatures, and above all else, things are going to get done by might, magic, and the blade. Or you might say, hey, I'm feeling a real Game of Thrones style campaign. Lots of political intrigue. Lots of betrayal, everyone's morally gray, and being a good guy doesn't always turn out well for you. Don't get attached to any characters, because their heads might explode. Hey, if you're driving on the parkway, and I can tell while I'm all the way in the woods that you're listening to Hotel California, it's too loud. <laughs> Laying out expectations in this way is a great way for a player to come to your table, look at your game, and say, you know what, this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. I think I'm going to bow out. Before they get four to five sessions into a game and realize, wow, we haven't even rolled dice or had a single combat. I thought that was what D&D was about. And what I'm not saying here is that your game can't 
change or pivot, but just to make sure your players are on board with the new idea and direction the campaign might be moving. Playing in a new game or at a new table is a huge investment, and laying out those expectations is a surefire way to save yours and your players' time. Maybe there's some systems out there I don't know about that talk about expectations in the book, but I think this should be the first thing in any sort of DMG, Dungeon Master Guide, Game Master's Guide, and I feel like I rarely see anything out there about it, so I thought I would talk about it today. Okay, this is a short little video, but like I said, forgot my Mazes book at home. I wanted to record something. This has been in my mind for a while, and I just thought I would get it out and talk to you guys about it today. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Tell me about your expectations when you come to a table and play. According to YouTube, only 5% of you are subscribing, so please subscribe. It costs you nothing, and it costs me everything. It's an old joke, but it checks out. I was about to clear them. All right, that's enough rambling from me today. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of this walk and go to work. Please subscribe so maybe I don't have to work for Amazon anymore, which is probably a worse company than Hasbro is somehow. All right, well, this is dumb and rambly. I'm out of here. Bye. I have scoured to the heart of the archives deep and traveled to the top of the cinder cloud peaks and forded the ever plains for the answers I seek. So beware of the realms where you meddle, for the fates can be fickle when the dice settles.